Welcome to our Send Your First FBA Shipment Training. We'll help you get started with FBA and learn how to send your first FBA shipment. Fulfillment by Amazon or FBA is a great way to grow your business and reach more customers. With FBA, Amazon stores your inventory, ships your orders, and handles returns and customer service. Your FBA products also become eligible for free shipping and Amazon Prime two-day delivery. To register for FBA, sign into Seller Central. Hover over the Settings icon and select Account Info. From here, locate your services and click Manage. Under You can sign up for, select Fulfillment by Amazon and click Register. Next, you'll want to enroll in the FBA New Selection Program. Benefits of the FBA New Selection Program include free monthly storage, removals, and return processing for all eligible new to FBA parent ASINs. Sellers new to FBA can also get up to $200 for sponsored ads and a $100 discount on Amazon Partnered Carrier Shipping. To enroll and learn more, search for FBA New Selection in Seller Central. Now it's time to convert your existing listings to FBA. To get started, visit the Manage Inventory page on Seller Central and select the listings you'd like to change to FBA. After selecting your listings, click the Action drop-down and select Change to Fulfilled by Amazon. From here, complete the workflow to convert your listings and begin your FBA shipment. On the Send to Amazon page, follow the steps in the workflow to create your first FBA shipment. The Send to Amazon workflow is broken down into the following steps. Step 1. Choose Inventory to Send. Step 1B. Pack Individual Units. Step 2. Confirm Shipping. Step 3. Print Box Labels. Step 4. Confirm Carrier and Pallet Information. And Step 5. Print Pallet Labels. For more information on this workflow, search for Create Shipments with Send to Amazon on Seller Central. Once your shipment is on its way to the Fulfillment Center, you can track its progress in Seller Central by visiting the Manage FBA Shipments page. This concludes our Send Your First FBA Shipment training. You now have the tools to grow your business and get started with FBA. Thank you and happy selling in the Amazon store! Welcome to our training on how Fulfillment by Amazon or FBA works. Whether you have a professional or individual selling account, you're eligible to enroll in FBA. You can use FBA to store your products in Amazon's fulfillment centers and let us pick, pack, and ship your FBA orders. We'll also handle returns and provide customer service on your behalf for these orders. With FBA, your items become eligible for prime shipping, meaning Amazon Prime customers can benefit from free two-day shipping and all Amazon customers can get free shipping on eligible orders. This is a great way to maximize exposure and sales in the Amazon store. Here's how FBA works. You'll first register for FBA and decide which products you'd like to send to a fulfillment center through the Send to Amazon workflow. To register, start by hovering over the gear icon in the top right corner of Seller Central. Select Account Info and then Manage on the Seller Account Information page. You'll see the option to register for FBA or other tools and programs you may be eligible for and can review a list of the ones you've already signed up for. Note that many, but not all, products are eligible for FBA, even if you're approved to fulfill orders for these products yourself. We recommend starting by searching and reviewing the following help pages in Seller Central to learn more. Dangerous Goods Identification Guide, Restricted Products, FBA Product Restrictions, and Categories and Products that Require Approval. Once you've determined which products you'd like to send to Amazon and checked that they're eligible, you'll create your FBA shipment. This includes prepping, labeling, and packing your products printing box labels, and if you're sending pallet shipments, confirming carrier and pallet information. Note that proper preparation, packaging, and labeling can ensure your products get transported safely and securely to the fulfillment center. This will help Amazon make your items available to customers more quickly. 
For more information on how to create shipments with Send to Amazon, search and review the Create Shipments with Send to Amazon help page. When you're ready, send your shipment off to one or more of Amazon's fulfillment centers as needed. After a fulfillment center receives your products, customers can begin purchasing your FBA offers in the Amazon store. We'll pack and ship these orders on your behalf and handle both customer service and returns for them. To put it simply, you sell and Amazon handles the rest. If a customer returns an item, they'll send it back to the fulfillment center that shipped their order, and it will be subject to the FBA customer returns policy. The fulfillment center will evaluate the items and return those still in sellable condition to your inventory. The FBA returns processing fee will apply to categories for which Amazon offers free return shipping. For more information, search for and review the Returns Processing Fee Help page in Seller Central. To make the most of FBA, it's important to understand two other fees, Fulfillment and Monthly Inventory Storage Fees. You'll pay fulfillment fees for each unit that's picked, packed, and shipped to customers from an Amazon Fulfillment Center. These costs vary depending on each item's size, weight, and category. You'll also pay monthly inventory storage fees, which vary depending on the average daily volume your inventory occupies in fulfillment centers, the size tiers of your products, and the time of year. We recommend using the FBA Revenue Calculator to estimate these and other FBA costs. To access this tool, search for Revenue Calculator in Seller Central. On the Revenue Calculator page, you can search and select different products view fulfillment fee and monthly inventory storage fee estimates, and compare what you might pay when using your own fulfillment method versus using FBA. You can also use reporting tools on your inventory dashboard to help forecast and manage your FBA inventory. To get there, start by selecting the menu icon in the top left corner of Seller Central. Hover over Inventory and select Manage FBA Inventory. Here, you'll have access to a number of reports that can help you maintain a balanced inventory level, avoid long-term storage fees, and keep your most popular products in stock. You'll see additional FBA inventory tools and resources listed at the top of the page. For more related trainings, search for FBA in Seller University. You'll learn about topics such as how to send your products to an Amazon Fulfillment Center, convert existing inventory to FBA, or manage your FBA inventory. Thank you and happy selling in the Amazon store! Welcome to our overview of Fulfillment by Amazon or FBA services. After watching this video, you'll be able to identify and use the services offered by FBA. FBA offers several services that can help make sellers' jobs easier. Let's find out what services are available and how you can benefit from using them. There are seven core FBA services, Amazon Partnered Carriers, Multi-Channel Fulfillment, FBA Label, FBA prep, FBA repackaging, inventory placement, and manual processing. You can find the help page for each service by searching for FBA services in Seller Central. In the Amazon Partnered Carrier Program, sellers receive deeply discounted rates for shipping their inventory to fulfillment centers. This is available for small parcel delivery or SPD shipments, less than truckload or LTL shipments, and full truckload or FTL shipments within the 48 contiguous United States. Using a partnered carrier for these shipments can greatly reduce costs. The cost for these shipments is also billed directly to your seller account as an inbound transportation charge. The next FBA service is Multi-Channel Fulfillment, or MCF. This service lets you use inventory stored in Amazon Fulfillment Centers to fulfill orders created on your own website or other channels, such as Shopify. The orders are delivered at the same speeds offered through FBA. You can use our fee calculator to preview MCF fees. Next, you can use the FBA label service to have Amazon apply barcode labels to your inventory for a per item fee.
Your products can't be prohibited, restricted, or of high value, and they must have a single scannable barcode that corresponds to an ASIN in Amazon's catalog. Note that your product must have a product ID or GTIN like a UPC in order to be eligible for the FBA label service. If your product doesn't have a product ID and barcode, you must label it yourself. Next, you can use the FBA prep service to have Amazon prepare your inventory for a per unit fee so that it meets FBA prep requirements. Each unit must have a product ID and scannable barcode. If Amazon preps your products, the FBA label service may be included automatically for selected products. You would then be charged the applicable per item fee. With FBA repackaging, Amazon will repackage your eligible FBA items that customers have returned so the items can be resold, saving you time. For refurbishment services, FBA can tape, glue, and staple boxes again, depending on the item. With the Inventory Placement Service, you can send all of your inventory to a single fulfillment center instead of sending multiple shipments to several destinations. Amazon will distribute it for you for a per item fee. Through this service, your products become available for sale as soon as we successfully receive them at any of our fulfillment centers. Search FBA Inventory Placement Service in Seller Central to learn how to change these settings, as well as exception category and detail fee information. Lastly, with the Manual Processing Service, you don't have to provide box content information when you ship inventory through FBA. Amazon will manually process your boxes at the Fulfillment Center for a per-item fee. Note that each box you include must have its own unique FBA box ID label printed, even if you're not providing box content information. Learn more about each service by searching for FBA services in Seller Central. This concludes our overview of FBA services. Thank you and happy selling in the Amazon store! Welcome to our Fulfillment by Amazon or FBA Fees Overview. This training will discuss fulfillment fees, monthly inventory storage fees, long-term storage fees, removal and disposal order fees, and FBA liquidations fees. FBA is a great way to grow your business, reach more customers, and provide one- and two-day delivery options on eligible orders with Amazon Prime. To make the most of this service, it's important to understand the fees associated with FBA. Let's look at a few different types, starting with fulfillment fees. Fulfillment fees are per unit fees for picking, packing, and shipping items to customers. Fulfillment fees are charged when a customer order is shipped and vary depending on an item's size and weight. Another FBA fee to consider is the monthly inventory storage fee. Monthly inventory storage fees are based on the amount of space your inventory occupies in fulfillment centers. This is an important factor to consider when determining how much inventory to send to Amazon. Monthly inventory storage fees will vary based on the daily average volume of space your inventory occupies in fulfillment centers, product size tier, and time of year. Monthly inventory storage fees are typically charged between the 7th and 15th day of the month. If your inventory is stored for more than 365 days, you'll also be charged a monthly long-term storage fee in addition to monthly inventory storage fees. Inventory age is calculated on a first-in, first-out basis across the entire fulfillment network. When your items are sold or removed, they're deducted from the inventory that has been in FBA the longest, regardless of which unit was shipped or removed. For example, if a Fulfillment Center associate picks and ships a unit that arrived to the Fulfillment Center recently, that unit will still be deducted from the oldest inventory you have in stock. Long-term storage fees are assessed with a monthly inventory snapshot and typically charged between the 18th and 22nd of each month. To avoid long-term storage fees on slow-selling inventory, you have the option of creating a removal order to have items returned to you, your warehouse, your supplier, or your distributor. You also have the option of creating a disposal order to request that Amazon dispose of items in your FBA inventory that may be expired, defective, or unsellable. 
When a removal or disposal order is created, you'll be charged a per-item fee based on an item's shipping weight. These fees are charged once an order is complete. They typically take about 14 business days to process. Depending on the time of year, like holiday seasons or peak removal periods, processing may take up to 30 business days. Alternatively, instead of paying to remove or dispose of excess or customer returned FBA inventory, you can choose to have FBA liquidate eligible items through a wholesale liquidator. By liquidating inventory, you'll recover a portion of your costs while avoiding monthly and long-term storage fees. For every item liquidated, you'll be charged a per-item processing fee based on the item's size and weight, plus a referral fee of 15% calculated on gross recovery value. Gross recovery value is 5 to 10% of an item's average selling price. Average selling price is determined by several factors, including your sales history, the average FBA selling price on Amazon, and the sales history of the specific ASIN. Once these fees are deducted, you'll be paid the net recovery value of your liquidated inventory no later than 90 days after your liquidation order is submitted. For more information on FBA fees, search for Selling on Amazon Fees Guide in Seller Central. This concludes our FBA fees overview. Thank you and happy selling in the Amazon store. Welcome to our Fulfillment by Amazon or FBA fees overview. This training will discuss fulfillment fees, monthly inventory storage fees, long-term storage fees, removal and disposal order fees, and FBA liquidations fees. FBA is a great way to grow your business, reach more customers, and provide one and two day delivery options on eligible orders with Amazon Prime. To make the most of this service, it's important to understand the fees associated with FBA. Let's look at a few different types, starting with fulfillment fees. Fulfillment fees are per unit fees for picking, packing, and shipping items to customers. Fulfillment fees are charged when a customer order is shipped and vary depending on an item's size and weight. Another FBA fee to consider is the monthly inventory storage fee. Monthly inventory storage fees are based on the amount of space your inventory occupies in fulfillment centers. This is an important factor to consider when determining how much inventory to send to Amazon. Monthly inventory storage fees will vary based on the daily average volume of space your inventory occupies in fulfillment centers, product size tier, and time of year. Monthly inventory storage fees are typically charged between the 7th and 15th day of the month. If your inventory is stored for more than 365 days, you'll also be charged a monthly long-term storage fee in addition to monthly inventory storage fees. Inventory age is calculated on a first-in, first-out basis across the entire fulfillment network. When your items are sold or removed, they're deducted from the inventory that has been in FBA the longest, regardless of which unit was shipped or removed. For example, if a Fulfillment Center associate picks and ships a unit that arrived to the Fulfillment Center recently, that unit will still be deducted from the oldest inventory you have in stock. Long-term storage fees are assessed with a monthly inventory snapshot and typically charged between the 18th and 22nd of each month. To avoid long-term storage fees on slow-selling inventory, you have the option of creating a removal order to have items returned to you, your warehouse, your supplier, or your distributor. You also have the option of creating a disposal order to request that Amazon dispose of items in your FBA inventory that may be expired, defective, or unsellable. When a removal or disposal order is created, you'll be charged a per-item fee based on an item's shipping weight. These fees are charged once an order is complete. They typically take about 14 business days to process. Depending on the time of year, like holiday seasons or peak removal periods, processing may take up to 30 business days. Alternatively, instead of paying to remove or dispose of excess or customer returned FBA inventory, you can choose to have FBA liquidate eligible items through a wholesale liquidator. By liquidating inventory, you'll recover a portion of your costs while avoiding monthly and long-term storage fees. For every item liquidated, you'll be charged a per-item processing fee based on the item's size and weight, plus a referral fee of 15% calculated on gross recovery value. 
Gross recovery value is 5 to 10% of an item's average selling price. Average selling price is determined by several factors, including your sales history, the average FBA selling price on Amazon, and the sales history of the specific ASIN. Once these fees are deducted, you'll be paid the net recovery value of your liquidated inventory no later than 90 days after your liquidation order is submitted. For more information on FBA fees, search for Selling on Amazon Fees Guide in Seller Central. This concludes our FBA fees overview. Thank you and happy selling in the Amazon store. Welcome to our overview of Fulfillment by Amazon or FBA policies. Knowing what FBA's policies are and how they impact you as a seller in the Amazon store is important to listing your products and fulfilling orders through FBA. FBA's three core policies involve customer feedback for FBA listings, customer returns for FBA orders, and FBA's reimbursement of lost and damaged inventory. Let's talk about customer feedback for FBA listings. If you receive negative feedback regarding the condition of your products or any service that you provide, the feedback and negative rating can't be changed. However, if your product is fulfilled through FBA and the negative feedback is the result of a service that Amazon provided, such as delivery, then you can request removal of the feedback on the Feedback Manager page. To find this page, search for Feedback Manager in Seller Central. After our review and removal approval, the negative rating won't be reflected in your performance metrics. The customer's review will remain with a note from Amazon, quote, this item was fulfilled by Amazon and we take responsibility for this fulfillment experience. The next FBA policy regards customer returns. If you use FBA, Amazon takes care of both fulfillment and customer service for your orders, which includes returns. For information on return eligibility for your products, search for FBA Customer Returns Policy in Seller Central. In most cases, customers can return an item within 30 days of receiving it. However, there are exceptions in which Amazon will accept returns after those 30 days. When a customer returns your product, it's sent back to a fulfillment center. After that, Amazon determines whether the item is sellable or unsellable. Sellable products go back into your inventory. For unsellable products, you may be eligible for a reimbursement depending on who caused the damage. You can have the returned items sent back to you using the FBA Customer Returns page by searching for FBA Customer Returns Policy in Seller Central and clicking FBA Customer Returns Report. After the condition is determined, all defective or customer damaged products must be removed from your inventory within 30 days of arrival at a fulfillment center. Lastly, if your product is lost or damaged under Amazon's control, either by an Amazon partnered carrier in a fulfillment center or during delivery, Amazon will replace the item with a new item of the same FinSKU. Alternatively, you can receive reimbursement for the product. To be eligible for reimbursement, the item or items must be FBA registered, comply with FBA product requirements, restrictions, and inventory requirements, have the same quantities as your shipment plan, and not be pending disposal, defective, or damaged. Additionally, your account health must be in good standing when filing a lost or damaged item claim. If your item meets these eligibility criteria and you haven't received reimbursement or replacement, you can file a claim. Note that the claim process varies and you must provide all requested information. You can find each claim process on the Help page by searching for FBA Inventory Reimbursement Policy in Seller Central. In this video, we've offered an overview of FBA policies for customer feedback, returns, and reimbursement on lost and damaged inventory. We hope this video helped you understand FBA rules and how to respond when issues occur. To learn more about FBA policies, search for FBA Policies and Requirements in Seller Central. Thank you and happy selling in the Amazon store.
Welcome to our overview of Fulfillment by Amazon or FBA inventory requirements. If you fulfill orders with FBA, you'll manage several processes using tools in Seller Central. For example, you'll manage your FBA inventory. You'll also send inventory to Amazon, track and reconcile shipments, remove inventory from Amazon fulfillment centers when necessary, and manage FBA orders. When using FBA, there are certain inventory requirements you must follow. Closely following these requirements can help you ensure a smooth send to Amazon workflow, reduce compliance delays, keep product listings active, and maintain good account health. After watching this video, you'll be able to identify and comply with eight core FBA inventory requirements. These requirements involve 1. Product titles 2. Item conditions 3. Packaging and prep 4. Barcodes 5. Shipping labels 6. Shipping and routing 7. Inventory storage limits and 8. Box content information you can find the help page for each requirement by searching for FBA Inventory Requirements in Seller Central. Let's first explore the FBA product title requirements. The product title requirements apply to all worldwide Amazon stores. This ensures that titles are easy to read, capture the essence of products, and accurately promote listings. Titles must not exceed 200 characters, including spaces not contain promotional phrases such as free shipping or 100% quality guaranteed, not contain characters for decoration, and contain key product identifying information such as hiking boots or umbrella. Failure to comply with these requirements may cause a product to be suppressed from Amazon search results. The second FBA requirement involves item conditions. Customers trust that Amazon sellers will correctly list the quality of their products. Delivering on this trust benefits customers and sellers alike. Therefore, having high quality control standards is crucial. In order for inventory to be sold as new in the Amazon store, it must arrive at the fulfillment center in brand new unused condition. Items listed as new will be inspected and marked as unsellable if there are scratches, wear, or other damage beyond what's considered acceptable for a new item. If your item is listed as used, it'll be marked as unsellable only if it's defective, unusable, mislabeled, or missing parts. Note that most carriers assume limited liability for damage or loss in transit depending on the cause. Keep watching to learn how to pack and prep your inventory to avoid damages during transit. The third requirement involves packaging and prepping. Inventory that's incorrectly prepped and labeled may incur a preparation fee. Amazon may also refuse, return, or repackage your inventory at your expense. Packaging and prep requirements depend on the specific products. Examples include loose products, sold as set products, boxed units, poly bagged units, and case packed products. Also, consider acceptable packaging, box dimensions, box weight, and packing materials. It's important that you use a rigid, suitably sized, six-sided box with its flaps intact. The box must be filled with enough packing material so that it doesn't collapse when heavier boxes are stacked on top of it. All cartons must meet the weight requirement and correct values provided for every shipment. And boxes containing multiple standard size items or oversized items must not exceed 25 inches on any side. Make sure that you're also familiar with FBA product restrictions before sending your products to fulfillment centers. To learn more, search for our video, FBA Product Restrictions Overview in Seller University. The fourth requirement involves labels printed with product barcodes. Barcodes ensure your FBA inventory can be identified and tracked. Amazon fulfillment centers receive and track numerous items using scannable barcodes as part of a streamlined process. Barcodes also help identify which products are yours so you'll get credit when they sell. Each item sent to an Amazon Fulfillment Center requires labeling with either a manufacturer barcode, such as a UPC, 
E-A-N-J-A-N, or ISBN, or an Amazon barcode such as a FinSKU. A manufacturer barcode is used by default to track eligible inventory throughout the fulfillment process. If your product isn't eligible for virtual tracking with the manufacturer barcode, then an Amazon barcode is required. A product might be ineligible for virtual tracking if it's restricted, a media product, a consumable product, or a product with an expiration date. If your product doesn't have a manufacturer barcode, you can either print Amazon barcode labels and apply them yourself, or outsource label printing to Amazon for a per item fee. For more information, search for Use an Amazon Barcode to Track Inventory and FBA Label Service in Seller Central. Our transparency service creates barcode labels that ensure the authenticity of products sold in the Amazon store. They can help prevent the sale of counterfeit products and protect brand owners, sellers, and customers. Note that this type of barcode doesn't replace the use of manufacturer or Amazon barcodes. To learn more about the transparency program, go to brandservices.amazon.com transparency. The fifth FBA requirement involves shipment labels. These labels differ from those featuring barcodes. When shipping your products to fulfillment centers, you need only two labels, a shipping label and an FBA box ID label on the outside of your box. This ensures your products arrive safely and quickly. Also, each FBA box label should contain box content information that you provide during the shipment creation workflow. You have the option to send each box using small parcel deliveries or to combine individual boxes on pallets using one of two workflows, less than truckload or LTL and full truckload or FTL. Whichever option you choose, each box and pallet must be properly identified with a unique box ID label and pallet label. If you ship pallets, four total pallet labels must be applied to each pallet, with one label at the top center of each side of your shipment. Ensure all labels are scannable and readable. Also, to avoid delays, make sure to put the correct label on the correct box. Verify that the SKU and number of units in each box match the SKU and number of units in the box content information you provide. Note that failure to label your boxes with the required FBA box ID label may prevent future shipments from occurring. The sixth requirement involves FBA shipping. This is essential as it ensures that your inventory is optimized for arrival at a fulfillment center. Different shipments may have additional requirements, so be sure to familiarize yourself with each requirement by searching for shipping and routing requirements in Seller Central. You'll also find the shipment checklist on this topic's help page. Your inventory might be refused at fulfillment centers at your expense. This can happen for reasons involving packages arriving larger than expected, being labeled incorrectly, violating policy, or being in unsellable condition. Additionally, all shipments require an advanced dock appointment made by your carrier. Without a dock appointment, your shipment will be refused. If your shipment is refused at a fulfillment center, your carrier will be informed. Work with your carrier for any shipment that's refused. If you're drop shipping and a distributor is shipping products directly to a fulfillment center, make sure they have the correct Amazon FBA box ID labels for your shipments. You can also grant limited label access to others in your seller account. The seventh requirement involves FBA inventory storage limits. Storage limits for each storage and account type are based on volume and measured in cubic feet. Individual sellers have a fixed storage limit of 10 cubic feet. Professional sellers may not have the storage limits based on the following criteria. New professional sellers who have been active for less than 26 weeks or without enough sales data to generate an Inventory Performance Index, or IPI, don't have fixed storage limits. Additionally, professional sellers who maintain an IPI score at or above the required threshold won't be subject to storage volume limits for standard size, oversize, clothing, and footwear items. Professional sellers with storage limits will have a minimum of 25 cubic feet for standard size, oversize, clothing, or footwear inventory. Storage limits apply to seven storage types standard size, oversize, apparel, footwear, flammable, aerosol, and extra large. 
To view your current and potential storage limits and usage on the Inventory Performance Dashboard, start by opening the Seller Central main menu. Hover over Inventory and click Inventory Planning, then click the Performance tab. Note that if you exceed your FBA storage limit, you won't be able to create a new shipment until your inventory level drops below your limit for that storage type. You can reduce your inventory by selling more of it, having it returned to you, or disposing of it via a removal order. The last requirement is providing box content information. Box content information helps speed the receipt of your shipment and makes your inventory available to customers sooner. Without the proper box content information, an FBA manual processing fee and future shipment prevention may be incurred. For Send to Amazon, provide box content information by creating a packing template. For detailed instructions, search for our Send to Amazon Create a Case Pack Template video in Seller University. We've just completed covering eight core FBA inventory requirements. Failure to comply with these requirements may result in the refusal of inventory at the fulfillment center, disposal or return of inventory, prevention of future shipments, or fees. Learn more about each requirement by searching for FBA inventory requirements in Seller Central. Thank you and happy selling in the Amazon store. Welcome to Send to Amazon, FBA's Future Shipment Creation Workflow. In this video, we'll cover the benefits of Send to Amazon and when you should try out this new workflow. Send to Amazon is a new shipment creation workflow for FBA sellers, saving you time through a streamlined and more flexible process for creating FBA shipments. Send to Amazon improves upon the Send Replenish Inventory workflow with new technology and a refreshed user interface, providing the following benefits. 1. Simplified workflow steps, reducing time spent creating shipments. 2. Ability to save and reuse pack, prep, and labeling information from shipment to shipment. 3. More flexibility in your process, such as packing boxes before confirming shipments. Send to Amazon is available today for all sellers in the United States, Canada, Mexico, Japan, Germany, United Kingdom, Spain, France, Italy, and Australia, and more. No additional fees or sign-up are required. You can access Send to Amazon from your shipping queue in Seller Central by clicking Inventory, then Manage FBA Shipments. Before you get started, it's important to note that Send to Amazon is still under development. Not all features are supported at this time. Depending on your shipment type, you may still need to use the existing Send Replenish Inventory Shipment Creation Workflow in Seller Central until the remaining features are built. Try out Send to Amazon today if 1. You pack single SKU or mixed SKU boxes and 2. You ship individual boxes using Small Parcel Delivery or SPD or as pallets using Less Than Truckload or LTL. In marketplaces where Amazon offers Partner Carrier, you can purchase shipping labels within Send to Amazon to take advantage of discounted shipping rates from Amazon Partnered Carriers. You're also welcome to purchase shipping outside of Send to Amazon with a carrier of your choice. To learn more about Send to Amazon, stay up to date on available features, and see our schedule of live demonstrations, visit the Send to Amazon General Information and Learning Opportunities page in Seller Central. That wraps up our introduction to Send to Amazon. Thank you and happy shipping! Ready to send in your FBA inventory? Welcome to the first video of the Send to Amazon series. This video gives a quick overview of creating shipments using Send to Amazon. To learn more about the workflow, check out the detailed step-level video tutorials in Seller University. Send to Amazon is a streamlined shipment creation workflow that saves you time by simplifying FBA shipment creation. You are guided through a series of steps based on the decisions you make when creating shipments. Note the steps you see may vary based on your choices. The first step in the workflow is providing box content information. Knowing the contents of each box allows us to move your inventory rapidly through our network with minimal manual touches.
Providing us with accurate box content information also reduces the chances of boxes getting sidelined due to inconsistent shipment information, thereby making your inventory available for sale faster. For inventory shipped in boxes containing multiple units of the same SKU, also known as single SKU boxes, you provide box content information through reusable case pack templates. These templates contain information on how your SKUs are prepped, labeled, and packed, and are ideal for SKUs shipped with the same box configuration shipment to shipment. Each time you create a shipment and send to Amazon, the box content information is automatically identified from your case pack template. You can simply enter the quantity of boxes to add them to the workflow and avoid re-entering these same details shipment to shipment when you always pack, prep, and label a SKU the same way. If you are packing more than one SKU in a box, also known as mixed SKU boxes, you'll be prompted to enter the quantity of units of each SKU that you are shipping. Once you have confirmed the inventory that you want to send in mixed SKU boxes, we determine which SKUs can be packed together based on whether they require special handling at our fulfillment centers. For example, SKUs considered to be hazmat or hazardous materials cannot be packed with other SKUs since hazmat SKUs are shipped to special fulfillment centers that can safely receive them. You are then prompted to provide box content information for each group of SKUs that can be packed together. If you are packing all your mixed SKUs in one box, you can directly enter the box weight and dimensions using a web form. If you pack your inventory in multiple boxes, you'll be prompted to upload your box packing details as a spreadsheet. Finally, you can ship both single SKU boxes and mixed SKU boxes simultaneously using Send to Amazon. As an example, if you normally sell fast-selling products on FBA and want to test customer interest with a few new products, you can create shipments with single SKU boxes using the case pack template for your fast-selling products and create mixed SKU boxes for your new products in the same workflow. The next step in the workflow is confirm shipping. Once you have provided box content information, we determine where each box has to be shipped, ensuring that your inventory is placed in close proximity to customers. Based on shipping destinations and boxes, we estimate carrier fees to ship your inventory as individual boxes using small parcel delivery, or SPD, or as pallets using less than truckload, or LTL options. This enables you to make a well-informed decision regarding the shipping mode that works for you. Whatever your shipping mode, you can choose to use an Amazon partnered carrier and purchase your shipping labels directly from within Send to Amazon, taking advantage of deeply discounted shipping rates. However, you are welcome to use any carrier you like to deliver your inventory to Amazon's fulfillment centers. After confirming your shipping, you are ready to label your boxes and pallets. Let's first consider the small parcel delivery shipping mode. Each box that you send to Amazon's fulfillment centers requires an FBA box ID label identifying the contents of the box. If you're using an Amazon partnered carrier, a shipping label will be generated for each box in addition to the FBA box ID label. Make sure that the correct label is applied to the correct box. If you're shipping pallets, an FBA box ID label will have to be placed on each box before you load them onto a pallet. Once the boxes are palletized, you'll be prompted to choose your carrier and provide pallet details for each shipment in the workflow. After confirming pallet information, you'll get four pallet labels for each pallet, one for each side of a pallet. When you are done labeling your boxes and or pallets, you're ready to hand them off to your carrier and start tracking when your inventory is received at our fulfillment centers. If you are using a non-partnered carrier, make sure you provide tracking IDs for your shipments so that we can prepare for their arrival. That concludes our short introduction to Send to Amazon. Check out the detailed step-level video tutorials in Seller University to learn more about the workflow. We'd love to hear what you think about Send to Amazon. Provide feedback by clicking on Your Feedback is Important within each step of the workflow or click on the Take a Quick Survey link you'll see after you create a shipment. Happy selling! And with Send to Amazon, happy shipment creation! Welcome to the video tutorial series on Send to Amazon, a streamlined workflow that simplifies FBA shipment creation.
In this video, we'll cover the steps to add SKUs in bulk to the shipment creation workflow using an Excel spreadsheet in Step 1, Choose Inventory to Send. This feature simplifies the process and saves you time for medium to large shipments. On the Send to Amazon page, choose File Upload as the SKU selection method. First, generate your template using the Template Generator tool. Start by selecting the optional columns that you need for your template. If one or more of your SKUs will be packed in single SKU boxes or shipping boxes that contain multiple units of the same SKU, select Include Extra Columns for Case Pack Information. This enables you to enter box contents, weights, and dimensions in the Excel file so you won't be prompted to re-enter this information in Seller Central, a great time saver. If you sell expiration dated products on Amazon, you can check Include Extra Column for Expiration Date to provide expiration dates directly in the Excel file. If you aren't sure about which of your SKUs require an expiration date, you can leave this option unselected. If any of your SKUs are subject to expiration, you'll be prompted to enter this information later. In this tutorial, we will only select Include Extra Columns for Case Pack Information since we are not sure which of the products will require an expiration date. Click Generate and Download File. Open the downloaded Excel sheet and select the Create Workflow Template tab to enter the SKUs that you want to add to the Send to Amazon workflow. To ensure that your products reach the buyer in perfect condition, they must be prepared and labeled properly. You can do the prep and labeling yourself, or you can have Amazon do it for a per unit fee. In the template sheet, enter the default prep owner and default labeling owner as seller or Amazon, depending on whom you choose to perform these tasks. These defaults will be applied to all SKUs that you add to the file unless otherwise specified in the table below. We'll show you how to override default settings later in the video. In this example, because you or your supplier do most of the required prep and labeling, you select Seller for both fields. Next, enter the Merchant SKU, that is the unique identifier for the product, and the quantity of sellable units of the product that you want to ship to Amazon. If the prep or labeling owner for the SKU is different from the default prep and labeling owner that you previously provided, you can override the default owner by filling in the optional prep owner and labeling owner columns. In our example, since our supplier has already done all the prep and labeling and the default owner is seller, we'll leave this column empty. Let's see how the SKU is packed. Let's suppose that your supplier packs this SKU in shipping boxes that contain one or more units of that SKU, also known as case packs. In the Excel file, you'll enter the number of units of the SKU in each shipping box, the quantity of boxes that you'll be shipping to Amazon, and the box weights and dimensions. If you normally sell fast-selling products on FBA and want to test customer interest with a few new products, you can upload an Excel file with case pack information for your fast-selling products and add your new products as individual units. You can then pack your individual units in shipping boxes with more than one unique SKU and provide box content information for these units in Step 1B, Pack Individual Units. Let's see how to add individual units to your template file. Enter the unique product identifier or merchant SKU and the quantity of units that you want to ship to Amazon. Since your supplier hasn't prepped and labeled these products, let's suppose that you want Amazon to do this for a per unit fee. To override the default settings, you enter the prep and labeling owners for this SKU as Amazon. After you've added all your SKUs and quantities, save the spreadsheet. Next, on the Send to Amazon page, you'll set the address that you want to ship from and the marketplace destination. These details determine which fulfillment centers you'll send your inventory to. Be aware that they can't be changed after you confirm your shipment destinations in Step 2, Confirm Shipping. Next, click Upload Completed File. Select the file that you want to upload and click Open. If there are any errors in the Excel file, an error message will appear. You can download a detailed report to view the errors. After you correct the errors, re-upload the file. If there are no errors in the Excel file, you'll see a message that the file has been processed successfully. Go to the SKUs Requiring Attention tab to provide additional details as required. In this example, the first product requires an expiration date. 
once you add the expiration date, the SKU will change to ready to send. The prep category for the second SKU is unavailable. Enter the prep requirements and click confirm. Once we've provided the necessary information for all the SKUs requiring attention, we're automatically redirected to the SKUs Ready to Send tab to review the list of SKUs that you're sending to Amazon and how they are packed, prepped, and labeled. For SKUs that you or your supplier will be labeling, you can click Print SKU Labels to print and apply labels. When you're done, continue to the next step. This concludes the instructional video for Step 1, Choose Inventory to Send Using File Upload. If you're shipping individual units, look for the video Step 1B, Pack Individual Units in Seller University. If you have already provided packing details for your single SKU shipping boxes or case packs in the Excel file, you can proceed directly to the Step 2, Confirm Shipping video. Thank you for watching and happy selling on Amazon! Welcome to the Send to Amazon video series. In this video, you will learn about the benefits of case pack templates in Send to Amazon and the steps to create them. Providing Amazon with accurate box content information allows us to move your inventory rapidly through our network, making them available for sale sooner. If you're shipping boxes with one or more units of the same SKU, we recommend that you create reusable case pack templates to provide box content information, box weights, box dimensions, prep and labeling information. Since these templates can be used for future shipments, you won't have to re-enter packing details every time you ship that SKU, thus reducing time spent creating shipments. Now let's see how to create a case pack template. First, click the Packing Details drop-down menu in Step 1. Choose Inventory to Send and select Create Case Pack Template. The Case Pack Template saves information about how you prep, label, and pack the SKU. We'll skip the name field for now. Units per box is the number of sellable units in each shipping box that you'll hand off to your carrier. If, for example, you always get case packs from your supplier with 10 sellable units per box, you would enter 10 here. Let's say that the box dimensions are 8 by 12 by 16 inches and that each box weighs 15 pounds. Next, enter information about the prep and labeling for each unit. If Amazon has stored the prep type for this SKU, it will appear here automatically. Otherwise, choose the prep category that applies to the SKU from the drop-down menu. If none of these fits your SKU and no additional prep is required, select No Prep Needed. In this example, we're selecting baby products as the prep category. Now tell us whether you want to prep each unit yourself or use the FBA prep service to have Amazon do it for a per unit fee. The same goes for labeling. In this example, because you or your supplier do all the required prep and labeling, you select seller for the who preps units and who labels units fields. Now back to the packing template name that we left blank earlier. If you have multiple manufacturers or suppliers, each of which packs differently, you might want to create multiple case pack templates for that SKU. Currently, Send to Amazon lets you create up to three case pack templates for each of your SKUs. Make sure to name each template so they're easy to tell apart. Let's call this template Warehouse LA-10 Units. Supposing that this product comes from your warehouse in Los Angeles and has 10 units per box. By clicking Save, you return to the beginning and can now see a preview of the template details you just entered. Because you selected Seller in Who Labels Units, you print the labels by clicking Print SKU Labels and then label your SKUs. To create a second case pack template for this SKU, click the Packing Detail drop-down menu and select Create Case Pack Template. Fill in the packing details and click Save. To edit or delete an existing case pack template, click the pencil icon next to the packing detail. After making your changes, click Save. To delete, click Delete Packing Template. This concludes the instructional video on how to create, modify, and delete case pack templates in Send to Amazon. Check out the detailed step-level video tutorials in Seller University to learn more about the workflow. Thank you and happy selling on Amazon!
Welcome to the Step Level video series on Send to Amazon, a streamlined shipment workflow that saves you time by simplifying fulfillment by Amazon or FBA shipment creation. In this video, we'll cover step one of the Send to Amazon workflow, Choose Inventory to Send. To access Send to Amazon, click the menu icon in the upper left corner of the Seller Central homepage to open the main menu. Hover over Inventory and select Manage FBA Shipments. Click the Send to Amazon link at the top of the Shipping Queue page. On the Send to Amazon page, you'll see a list of all your SKUs that have been converted to FBA. To learn more about converting your inventory to FBA, go to Seller University and search for Converting Products to FBA. You can start a new workflow anytime by clicking Start New at the bottom of the Send to Amazon page. First, you'll set the address that you want to ship from and the marketplace destination. These details determine which fulfillment centers you'll send your inventory to. You won't be able to change them after you confirm your shipment destinations in Step 2, Confirm Shipping. Next, determine how you'd like to pack your shipping boxes. Knowing the contents of each shipping box allows us to move your inventory rapidly through our network with minimal manual touches. Providing us with accurate box content information also reduces the chances of boxes getting sidelined because of inconsistent box content information. It also allows us to make your inventory available to sell faster. There are two ways to add inventory that you want to send to Amazon. The first way is to add the inventory as case packs, which are shipping boxes that contain one or more units of the same SKU. The second way is to add the inventory as individual units and provide box content information for these units in the next step. First, let's look at adding case packs or single SKU boxes to the workflow. If you are shipping boxes with one or more units of the same SKU, we recommend that you create reusable case pack templates to provide box content information, box weights, box dimensions, and prep and labeling information. Since these templates can be used for future shipments, you won't have to re-enter packing details every time you ship that SKU. To learn how to create a case pack template, search for Send to Amazon, Create a Case Pack Template in Seller University. To replenish your case packed SKUs, choose the template that contains information about how the SKU is packed, prepped, and labeled from the Packing Details drop-down list. For quantity to send, you can select the recommended quantity that's generated based on your shipment history to Amazon. If you selected Seller as the labeling owner in the Case Pack template, the Print SKU Labels link will be visible. Click it to print and apply SKU labels. If you have remaining individual units that don't fit into your current Case Pack template, you can select more inputs to create another pack line. Next, enter the number of boxes you want to send. For this SKU, you're sending 13 boxes. This equals 130 units because your case pack template shows that each shipping box contains 10 sellable units. Click Ready to Send. With that, you now know how to add single SKU boxes created with case pack templates to your Send to Amazon workflow. Now, let's look at adding individual products to the workflow. This is ideal if you're sending mixed SKU boxes, that is, shipping boxes that contain more than one unique SKU, or sending single SKU boxes that change from shipment to shipment. Start by selecting individual units under Packing Details. Next, enter information about the prep and labeling of each unit. To change the prep category for each SKU that you selected, click Set Prep Category. From the Prep for Each Unit drop-down menu, select a category. Click Save. After reviewing the summary of changes, close the pop-up window. The change will be applied at the SKU level. To change the prep owner, label owner, or both, click Set Prep and Label Owner. Select either Apply to Chosen Packing Templates or Apply to All Packing Templates. Select an owner from either the Who Preps Units drop-down menu, the Who Labels Units drop-down menu, or both. Click Save. After reviewing the summary of changes, close the pop-up window. The changes will be applied at the template level. When you're done, enter the number of sellable units and click Ready to Pack. If you're shipping individual units, you'll notice a new step in the workflow. Step 1B, Pack Individual Units, where you'll be prompted to provide box content information for these SKUs. 
You can also print all SKU labels by clicking the Print All SKU Labels button beside the Pack Individual Units button. Note that you can create shipments that have both single SKU boxes created with case pack templates and individual units packed in mixed SKU boxes in the same workflow. After you've added all the inventory that you want to send, continue to the next step. This concludes our video, Step 1, Choose Inventory to Send. To learn more about shipping individual units, search for the video, Step 1B, Pack Individual Units in Seller University. To learn more about shipping single SKU boxes using case pack templates only, you can proceed directly to the video, Step 2, Confirm Shipping. Thank you and happy selling in the Amazon store. Welcome to our video on Step 1B of Send to Amazon, a streamlined shipment workflow that saves you time by simplifying fulfillment by Amazon or FBA shipment creation. In this video, you'll learn steps to provide box content information and pack individual units from Step 1 of the workflow. You won't see this step on Seller Central's Send to Amazon page if you already provided box content information for all your SKUs using the case pack templates in Step 1. Once you've confirmed the quantity of individual units to send to Amazon, we determine which SKUs can be packed together based on whether they require special handling at our fulfillment centers. For example, SKUs that are categorized as dangerous goods or hazmat can't be packed with other SKUs. That's because dangerous goods are shipped to special fulfillment centers that can receive them safely. Two other factors that determine which SKUs can be packed together are product weights and dimensions. Also, oversized SKUs can't be packed with standard sized SKUs. That's because oversized SKUs can only be received at specialized fulfillment centers. Finally, SKUs that require prep or labeling to be performed by Amazon shouldn't be packed with SKUs that are already prepped and labeled. This ensures that boxes containing SKUs that don't require Amazon to prep or label them aren't unnecessarily sidelined at the fulfillment center and can be made available to customers sooner. Once your pack groups are determined, you'll be prompted to provide box content information for the SKUs in each pack group. In this example, inventory has been sorted into two pack groups. You can pack SKUs in a pack group in any combination. However, you shouldn't mix SKUs from one pack group with SKUs from another pack group. If all units in a pack group fit into one box, select everything will fit into one box and click confirm. Then enter the box weight and dimensions and click confirm packing information. If the units in a pack group will be packed in more than one box, select multiple boxes will be needed and click confirm. Next, provide packing information for your multiple boxes. From the drop-down menu, you have three options. The Enter Through a Web Form option lets you enter box content information individually using a web form. The Upload Excel File option lets you efficiently upload box content information in bulk. The Amazon Manually Processes Box Contents option lets you choose to outsource this step and have Amazon provide this service for a per-unit fee. Select Enter Through a Web Form if you have less than 12 units. Next, enter the estimated number of boxes and click Open Web Form. Then enter your box content information. Here, you'll enter the units boxed, box weight, and box dimensions. Then, click Confirm Packing Information. For more guidance, click Instructions or Need Help in the top right corner. Select Upload Excel File to efficiently upload box content information in bulk. Then enter the estimated number of boxes that the SKUs in a pack group will fit into. Next, click Generate Excel File. Download the template and open the file in Excel. For each box, enter the number of units of each SKU that you'll be packing in that box. Make sure that the quantity of units in the boxes for each SKU is equal to the expected quantity of SKUs in that box. Next, enter the box weight and dimensions. As you pack, mark your boxes as Pack Group 1 Box 1, Pack Group 1 Box 2, and so on. This will help you match the right FBA box ID label to each box in Step 3, Print Box Labels. 
After you're done packing your shipping boxes and entering the information in the Excel file, save the file and upload it to send to Amazon by clicking Upload and Validate File. We understand that as you pack your boxes, you might want to change the quantity of certain SKUs to account for damaged inventory or to optimize the space inside one or more boxes. You can do so by going back to step one and updating the quantity of SKUs that you want to send. When you're done, proceed to step 1B. Note that the pack groups can change when you add or remove SKUs in step 1. Make sure that you re-upload the box content information for updated pack groups. After you provide box content information for all pack groups, click Confirm and Continue to proceed to the next step. This concludes the instructional video for step 1B, Pack Individual Units. In the next step, we'll determine the optimal location for your boxes to be sent so they're as close to your customers as possible. Check out the video for Step 2 Confirm Shipping in Seller University. Thank you and happy selling in the Amazon store. Welcome to our video on Step 2 of Send to Amazon, a streamlined shipment workflow that saves you time by simplifying fulfillment by Amazon or FBA shipment creation. Now that you've completed Step 1 and chose inventory to send, let's continue with Step 2 and confirm shipping. Make sure that you've completed Step 1 already before proceeding to Step 2. Depending on the SKUs you select in Step 1 of the Send to Amazon workflow, your inventory could be sent to more than one Amazon Fulfillment Center. These are represented by shipment cards that appear in Step 2 of the workflow. When necessary, sending your inventory to multiple fulfillment centers helps ensure products can reach more customers more quickly and gives you the best chance to meet prime customer delivery promises. Click View Contents to see how your boxes are allocated across each shipment and to download a pack list. You can also print your SKU labels here if you haven't done so already. After reviewing the shipments, locate the Ship Date field and enter the date that you expect to hand off your inventory to your carrier. If you're unsure of the exact shipping date, make your best guess for now. You can update this field later. Providing an accurate ship date helps us plan for receiving your inventory in our fulfillment network and helps prevent unnecessary delays when delivering your products to customers. Next, choose the shipping mode. This refers to how your shipment will be transported. You can send your inventory as individual boxes by selecting the Small Parcel Delivery or SPD option or as pallets by selecting the Less Than Truckload or LTL option. You can now choose multiple modes of shipment in the Send to Amazon workflow by unchecking the Shipping Mode checkbox. If you choose SPD, you'll be prompted to select a carrier to ship your products to our fulfillment centers. You can take advantage of discounted rates by choosing an Amazon-partnered carrier. This option allows you to purchase and print shipping labels within Send to Amazon. If you decide to use a different carrier, select one from the non-Amazon partnered carrier drop-down list. If you don't know which carrier you'll use, or if you'll be using more than one, select Other. Review the estimated shipping charges in the bottom right corner of your screen before you accept and confirm shipping. If you choose the LTL option, you'll be able to see estimated pallet configurations based on the box content information you provided in Step 1 of the workflow. These are used to estimate the cost for shipping LTL, which serves as guidance for deciding the way your shipment will be transported. To reduce your overall shipping costs, you have the option to modify your pallet configurations and to confirm the carrier in Step 4 of the workflow. After finalizing the shipping mode, review the shipments and click Confirm Shipping. At this point, your shipments will be created and an ID will be generated for each shipment. The next STA step is printing box labels. Check out the STA Step 3 video to complete this step. Thank you and happy selling in the Amazon store. Welcome to our video on Step 3 of Send to Amazon, a streamlined shipment workflow that saves you time by simplifying fulfillment by Amazon or FBA shipment creation. This step involves printing your box labels. By this time, your shipments have been confirmed in Step 2.
In step three, you can see the details for each shipment, including the default shipment name and shipment ID within each shipment card. The default shipment names can be updated by clicking Rename. We understand that due to normal business events, you might need to make edits to shipment contents at this stage. You can do so by clicking the arrow that expands the shipment contents section and then clicking View or Edit Contents. Make sure shipment contents is expanded by clicking the arrow to see the link. In the pop-up window that appears, you can see how your boxes are allocated across each shipment, print the pack list, and edit the number of units within a shipment by 6 units or 5% of those units, whichever is greater. After you've finalized the quantity changes, click Validate Updates. If you need to change more units than these limits allow, you must cancel the workflow by clicking Delete Shipment and Charges at the bottom of the page and then create a new workflow. Let's see how to print box labels. First, select the box and shipping label size from the drop-down menu. Then click Print to generate a PDF with labels for each box in your shipment. Each box you send to Amazon Fulfillment Centers requires an FBA box ID label that identifies the contents of the box. If you're using an Amazon partnered carrier with your small parcel shipment, a shipping label will be generated for each box in addition to the FBA box ID label. If you're using a non-partnered carrier, work with them to create the carrier shipping labels for your boxes. Make sure that the correct FBA box ID label is applied to each box to avoid excessive receive delays. If you chose SPD, apply one shipping label per box as well as box labels. If you chose LTL, apply one shipping label per pallet, which will become available in a later step. There is one more step left, and the last step differs depending on the shipping mode and shipping carrier you selected in step two. If you're using a non-partnered carrier for SPD, hand off your boxes to a non-partnered carrier. Then click Proceed to enter tracking details to enter the shipment tracking ID in the tracking ID field. Then click Save to change your shipment status to Shipped. You can track each shipment by clicking the Track Shipment links at the bottom of the page. If you're using an Amazon partnered carrier, they'll pick up boxes and automatically provide you with tracking information. Click View Tracking Details and you'll be directed to the final step, Tracking Details. For all small parcel deliveries, you've completed the last step of the Send to Amazon workflow. You can check your tracking details by clicking View. If you chose LTL and shipping pallets, now you're ready to proceed to step four. Click Continue to Carrier and Pallet Information to continue. Search for the video Send to Amazon Step 4, Confirm Carrier and Pallet Information in Seller University to watch our step-by-step -step guide. This concludes our video on printing box labels. Thank you and happy selling in the Amazon store. Welcome to our video on Step 4 of Send to Amazon, a streamlined shipment workflow that saves you time by simplifying fulfillment by Amazon or FBA shipment creation. This step involves confirming carrier and pallet information. Note that you'll only see this step on the Send to Amazon page in Seller Central if you're shipping pallets. Now that you've printed and applied box labels, you're ready to palletize your boxes and confirm carrier information. The steps to provide pallet information differ depending on the carrier selection, Amazon Partnered Carrier or Non-Partnered Carrier. First, let's explore the steps for using an Amazon Partnered Carrier. Select the first tab, Amazon Partnered Carrier. Here you can purchase shipping labels for send to Amazon, schedule pickup, and take advantage of discounted shipping rates. Next, enter the freight ready date, which is the date when your shipments will be ready for pickup by the carrier. Giving Amazon an accurate freight ready date helps us plan for receiving your inventory in our fulfillment network. This, in turn, helps us avoid unnecessary delays. If this is your first shipment, add the contact information for someone at your pickup location who can coordinate with the carrier. If this isn't your first shipment, select an existing contact. Next, palletize your boxes if you haven't done so already and provide pallet information for each shipment. 
We pre-populate this section based on the box content information you provided in step one of the workflow. Verify these details are correct and then click confirm to receive estimated carrier charges. If the details are incorrect, edit them to provide accurate pallet information. Updating pallet information will recalculate the shipping fees. Now, let's go through each field in the Pallet Information section. Freight class is a standardized classification system used to determine the billable weight and risk of a shipment. Ranked from 50 to 500, freight class can be entered manually. You can also choose to use Amazon's estimates instead. Freight declared value is optional and helps us determine the value of your inventory. If left blank, we'll assume the value is $1.50 times the shipment weight. Next, enter pallet weight and height, whether the pallets are stacked or not, and the number of pallets for each configuration. After confirming the pallet information for all shipments, accept your carrier charges by clicking Confirm Carrier and Pallet Information. This completes Step 4 of the workflow for sellers shipping with an Amazon partnered carrier. If you're shipping with an Amazon partnered carrier, you can stop here and skip to our final Send to Amazon video in Seller University. Step 5. Print Pallet Labels. If you're shipping with a non-partnered carrier, continue watching this video. If you decide to book shipping outside of Send to Amazon with a carrier of your choice, select the second tab, Non-Partnered Carrier. If you haven't done so already, palletize your boxes and confirm the number of pallets in each shipment. Click Print to print four copies of the FBA Pallet ID labels for each of your pallets. Pallet labels include information that fulfillment centers use to verify the arrival and contents of a shipment. Place one label squarely on each of the four sides of the pallet so that forklift drivers will be able to see them. Next, select the carrier that you'll be using to ship to Amazon. If your carrier isn't on the list, select Other. To finalize the step, start by clicking Proceed to enter tracking details. Enter your PRO freight bill number provided by your carrier. If you also have a bill of lading or BOL number, you may enter it in addition to the PRO freight bill number. Finish by clicking Save to change your shipment status to Shipped. Note that when you're not using the Amazon Partnered Carrier Program, you must provide your tracking information for shipments. This information is used to update your shipments to shipped status and helps fulfillment centers verify the arrival and contents of your shipment. This brings us to the end of shipment creation if you're shipping pallets with a carrier of your choice. To learn how to complete this workflow, search for our final Send to Amazon video in Seller University, Step 5, Print Pallet Labels. Thank you and happy selling in the Amazon store. Welcome to our video on Step 5 of Send to Amazon. Amazon, a streamlined shipment workflow that saves you time by simplifying fulfillment by Amazon or FBA shipment creation. This step involves printing pallet labels. You'll only see this step on the Send to Amazon page in Seller Central if you're shipping pallets with an Amazon partnered carrier. Now that your pallets are packed, it's time to apply pallet labels. Print your pallet labels by selecting your print format from the pallet labels drop down menu and clicking Print Pallet Labels. This generates four copies of the FBA pallet ID and shipping label for each pallet in your shipment. Place one label squarely on each of the four sides of the pallet so that the forklift driver will be able to see them. You can also print the bill of lading or BOL in this step if you click View Tracking Details. For each pallet shipment, you must provide a valid BOL to the carrier so they can schedule a delivery appointment. The BOL will be generated no later than 8 a.m. local time the morning of pickup. During pickup, make sure you provide your assigned partnered carrier both the BOL and the Amazon Reference Number or ARN. You can track each shipment by clicking the Track Shipment links at the bottom of the page. You've completed the last step of the Send to Amazon workflow. This concludes Step 5, Print Pallet Labels, as well as how to create a shipment if you're shipping pallets with an Amazon partnered carrier. Thank you and happy selling in the Amazon store.
Welcome to our training, Manage Your FBA Inventory. After watching this video, you'll be able to use features on the FBA Inventory Management page in Seller Central and maintain FBA inventory after shipping your products to a fulfillment center. Maintaining your FBA inventory is crucial. If you run out of inventory for a given product, the listing for that product will automatically be inactivated. This will negatively impact your sales and sales velocity, and may also impact your search ranking. You also may incur long-term storage fees, which are costlier than standard storage fees, if your inventory is poorly managed or if you store excess inventory for too long. To help you ensure that your FBA inventory is current, let's explore how to use the FBA Inventory Management page in Seller Central. First, click the menu icon in the top left corner of the Seller Central homepage. Hover over Inventory and click Manage FBA Inventory. You'll be taken to your FBA Inventory Management page. On this page, you can add a product to your FBA inventory, view your current FBA products, and check the number of products that are either inbound, available, unfulfillable, or reserved. Note that the page will reflect when your products actually arrive at a fulfillment center. Before you ship your products, make sure to consider how long they'll take to arrive at the fulfillment center. We recommend that you have about two months of inventory on hand at fulfillment centers at any given time. Remember to check your inventory frequently. If your unit level is zero, your listing will become inactive. Also, if you set inventory replenishment alerts, you'll see a red bell next to the number in the available column representing the stock that's low at the fulfillment center. To set replenishment alerts or to view more features, click the edit button. Here are two other things to consider when maintaining your FBA inventory. First, you might benefit from high stock limits. These limits reduce the number of times you have to send your products to fulfillment centers. The higher your sell-through rate, the more these limits will increase. Strategies such as running ads and deals can help you promote your products and may increase both your sales and your stock limits. Also, ensure that you don't have inventory sitting in fulfillment centers for long periods of time, as this may negatively impact your sell-through rate. Second, make sure to always check that your inventory is kept at an adequate level and that you're aware of any low stock alerts. Let's review the best practices for maintaining FBA inventory. Check your inventory frequently on the FBA Inventory Management page. Set replenishment alerts. Have approximately two months of inventory at fulfillment centers. Increase your stock limits using marketing and promotions. Send products you know will sell. This concludes our video on managing your FBA inventory. Thank you and happy selling in the Amazon store. Welcome to our overview of the Inventory Performance Index, or IPI. If you have a professional selling plan and store inventory at an Amazon Fulfillment Center, you'll receive an IPI score. It measures how well you manage your fulfillment by Amazon or FBA inventory. In this video, we'll explain which factors impact your IPI and where to find tips for improving your score. Think of IPI as a scale. It tracks how well you balance keeping products in stock to meet customer demand with avoiding excess inventory. We recommend you start by stocking enough items to cover between 30 and 60 days of your expected sales. Then review your IPI score regularly to help avoid missing out on sales or paying long-term FBA storage fees. To check your IPI score, expand the IPI section at the top of the Seller Central homepage. Then, click the IPI score next to the store you'd like to review. You'll arrive at the Inventory Performance page. Here, you can reference a snapshot of your IPI score, which is updated weekly, top influencing factors like in-stock inventory, and a summary of the percentage of your FBA sales revenue you spent on FBA storage fees over a given time frame. 
You can review recommendations on how to improve your FBA inventory performance across these categories in the Ways to Improve Your Performance section on the Inventory Performance page. Select the Show More Details checkbox below a recommendation for more information. In this example, we surfaced an Amazon Selling Partners in-stock rate over a number of weeks and estimated lost FBA sales over the past 30 days. They can use these insights to inform the FBA inventory quantities they'll keep in stock. Select the drop-down arrow icons at the bottom of the page to review your restock limits and storage volume. The Restock Limits section helps you manage the quantities you add to your FBA inventory. We calculate your restock limits based on your historical sales and forecasted demand. The Storage Volume section lets you know the amount of space these items are occupying in fulfillment centers compared to your storage limits. We recommend reviewing your IPI score and these two sections regularly since your performance in these areas can determine if you'll be subject to storage limits. These limits help Amazon manage storage capacity as customer demand changes. If you exceed your storage limits, you'll pay monthly overage fees and won't be able to create new shipments. Select the letter I icon on the right side of each section for more information on restock limits or storage volume. Note that your IPI score considers both recent and historical performance. This means factors like seasonality, unexpected disruptions to your business, or other short-term fluctuations are less likely to impact your score. This also means you'll have more time to adjust your FBA inventory strategy. Note that a few factors won't impact your IPI score. New ASINs won't impact your IPI score for the first 90 days, so you can have time to test new products and monitor your sales. Pending removals, including liquidation orders, won't impact your IPI score since you've already addressed your aged or excess inventory. And if you're new to FBA or haven't been active in the past 13 weeks, you might not receive an IPI score until more data is available. Search IPI score in Seller Central to learn more about them and how they're calculated. This concludes our overview on IPI scores. Thank you and happy selling in the Amazon store.